Hi, Ben and Acer. Um, welcome to, to Blue Eye. Um, maybe you can uh, start by uh, saying something about yourself. Yeah, sure. Well, hi, I'm Ben. Uh, so I'm managing director and one of the founders of Impact Subsea. Um, I've been actively involved in the subsea sector for around 16 years now. Um, and I've spent the last seven years developing Impact Subsea. Yeah, and uh, hi, I'm uh, Asher. I'm a technical sales engineer in uh, Impact Subsea. And before that, I worked as an ROV pilot and a survey engineer for almost nine years. Maybe you can say something about uh, Impact Subsea. Uh, yeah, so Impact Subsea was founded in 2015, and we founded the company with a focus to create game-changing underwater technology solutions. And primarily, all our solutions are aimed at ROV and AV applications. And since that time, we've developed a range of underwater sensors, um, which lead their respective markets in terms of technical capability, and its size and build quality. So we're based in Aberdeenshire in a small town called Ellen. Uh, we started with two founders and we're now up to a staff of eight people. And the market is globally? Yeah, it's a global market for us. Uh, we operate uh, around the world. We've got um, a network of 20 distributors um, who resell and support our products locally. Um, and we're probably about 80% um, exports. Um, so who is your customers? Maybe you can tell me something about who, what, what kind of industries, operations, uh, the things you, your customers do with uh, the technology. Okay, so um, mainly our sonars are used in many underwater industries. Uh, that's including like oil and gas, uh, renewable energy, aquaculture, um, scientific, defense. Uh, and within these areas, uh, the ISS 360 sonar uh, and also some of our other sensors uh, used with different kinds and sizes of uh, ROVs and AOVs. Uh, and mainly it's used to help in uh, like uh, navigation, search and rescue activities, treasure hunting, uh, general underwater uh, uh, terrain expor exploration. Mainly, if we're talking about the, um, the ISS 360 more, it's uh, it's kind of ideal uh, for kind of applications where you need to see beyond beyond what you see um, in short range uh, cameras. Uh, so you can see uh, a 360 degrees uh, of field vision around the ROV or the AUV uh, and uh, as far as 90 meters away. So you mentioned uh, navigation, but you have other other areas where you can use your sonars? Yeah, so it's um, something like uh, navigation. It's mainly when we're talking about ROVs and AUVs, uh, but also it's used, um, some of our customers use it uh, in search, search and rescue activities. Uh, like they, uh, they mounted on uh, automated uh, uh, surface vehicles or uh, some boats even. Uh, some people uh, drop it like uh, in frames and drop it in the water and uh, just uh, for uh, discovering something what's there underwater. Uh, some people also like uh, use it for like uh, monitoring fishes and uh, these different kind of stuff. So it's, it's really just limited by your uh, imagination. Exactly. Just to visualize this to, to the viewers before uh, this meeting, we, we asked you if you could uh, maybe have an example of, of a, a specific use case or something you've used it for. One of the exciting uh, recent applications that we have um, from one of our customers, of course, it's uh, uh, made by uh, Woods Hole. Uh, and they used the sonar, the ISS 360 sonar, uh, in the automated navigation of a um, uh, Remus uh, 100 AUV. Uh, in this application, the ISS 360 uh, was used to detect obstacles. Um, and that was by automatically build up a map of obstacles around the AUV. Uh, and uh, the AUV was programmed to avoid all of these ob obstacles uh, from that. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a paper actually was uh, published uh, regarding this one uh, by Woods Hole University. And it was, um, I believe it's on IEEE uh, in uh, 2021. Uh, um, uh, proceedings, uh, and also we have a small article on our website if uh, if people are interested to know more about this. 
Uh, I was told you you have a picture of this uh, this AUV. Yeah. So if you if you can just tell us what what are we seeing in this picture for those who may not be too acquainted to, yeah. to this area. Uh, so mainly the um, uh, what you see here in the photo is uh, the Remus 100 um, AUV, and uh, in the left part of the photo here and sticking out of the AUV is the head of our uh, ISS 360 sonar, mm -hmm. uh, and mainly they just. Um, program it, drop it in the water, and create a path. And the sonar is um, scanning and getting like um, a, a map or creating a map uh, to decide where are the obstacles and help the help the AUV uh, avoiding these kind of obstacles. Yeah. So if there's a big rock or an anchor chain, you the the program will see it using the 360 from from a bit off, and it will will uh, avoid it with the AUV. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The software is very flexible. You can mount it the way you want uh, to to get the best image that you uh, that you that you need it. And um, you just have like some tweaks in the software um, very simply and uh, you get the, uh, the image that you want with the settings that you want. So as we saw in the picture that development of, of underwater equipment and sonars is, is moving on and and you've been in, in the game for a while and maybe you can say something about how you've seen the development since you started the company until now and uh, also in relation to like AUV or ROVs getting smaller in size and, and changing demands for, for your equipment. I guess since our first product we've always tried to make things as small as possible. We start on the, the electronic side. Um, so the smaller you can get the electronics, the better, because then it's easier to get into a smaller housing uh, and that keeps the overall size of the sensor down. And keeping the housing small as well has the benefit of um, enabling a, a deeper depth of operation uh, quite easily. So I guess we started up the company with a, a focus on making small electronics and small sensors. So they could be suited to existing kind of RVs and AVs out there but also they would fit well with kind of newer, smaller RVs and AVs that were coming to market. Maybe you want to say something about what uh, what makes uh, Impact Subsea unique or, or different from, from other suppliers? I guess we mentioned that we also have a focus on creating groundbreaking underwater sensor technology. Um, aside from the, the technical offerings, um, I'd say we always supply our sensors for very low lead times. We keep all sensors in stock. So we can supply sensors quickly where required and we offer a really quick turnaround on, on servicing. So if you ever have to send anything back for annual service, it's uh, not with us too long. And we provide free 24 seven technical support. So we, we make sure once you have our sensors, they're always supported in the field. So here you can see a, a video that, that we made in Blue Eye where we out diving uh, using the, the ISS 360 from Impact Subsea on the Blue Eye X3. Maybe we could get your comments on, on what we can actually see, because you, you are the sonar expert, so that would be... Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah. It's a great deployment. It's a really good demo of this, of the ISS 360 sonar. There we go. So we've got some uh, sonar imagery there showing the top right-hand corner. You can see that the visibility is quite poor from the cameras, but the sonar is enabling you to see through the low vis and see the hard targets that are in front of you. Uh, to the right, we can see another target, which uh, is likely a wall. We know the kind of terrain we're operating in. And um, so in this case, we can't see anything on the video, but you know there's something ahead. So as you get closer to it, uh, hopefully you'll see it on the video as well. As you say, it's, it's quite poor visibility in the upper layer of the waters. And, and we have the dock side on the right uh, here, and we're looking for a ship, which we're, or a boat we're going to do uh, check the propellers on. So yeah, now you can see, uh, actually on screen, you can start to see the, the propeller of the boat. Um, and on the sonar scan as well, you can see there's a, a target right in front of, this, of the sonar, a very short range, along with the dock wall on the right-hand side. Uh, and this example here, um, I guess we're showing a full 360-degree scan from the sonar. Yeah, so what we did here is we, we parked the Blue Eye X3 on the seafloor. Um, and put it to to high quality and and really yeah the highest quality and and long range uh, to see the harbor area. So you can okay. see the uh, if I'm right, it's the probably the sea floor we can see around it. Then 
Yeah, so I guess from about the, if you look at it, like a clock, from about three o'clock to the 10 o'clock position, and about it's up to 25 meters, you can see a lot of the kind of seafloor reflections coming off of the sand or any kind of rock array that's, uh, that's there. Mm. And more out is about the, I guess, 45 meter range, um, up to the 75 meter range, you can see the outline of the, the kind of dock wall, the harbor walls. We cheated and we put a, a vi uh, image from uh, from a map so that you can see the same area. <laughs> yeah, that's good. If you kind of pause it there, yeah. So this this example here, you can see the the kind of top down view of the area. You can also see the sonar data of what's uh, what's happening underwater. And so you can see where the sonar is being positioned. You can see the um, I guess the the sea floor um, or the harbor floor and any kind of returns in there. And also picking up the, the harbor wall down at a kind of six o'clock position. Yeah. So this is a typical, this is something like the AUV did. It, it just runs the, the sonar and, and it gets a map of the area and then it can avoid uh, do, the, a dockside or a uh, pilings or whatever is in, in the picture. Yeah, that's right. And uh, I guess what should be noted here is you can adjust the sonar to do a high resolution scan, uh, which takes quite a lot of time because it takes a lot of samples, a lot of really fine steps. It slows it down, but you get a much crisper, high detail image. Or you can adjust it to do a really fast scan. So it can scan very quickly, maybe if you're navigating and moving at the time, so you avoid any obstacles in your path. So if you're not too concerned about the quality of the imagery, you just want to know, is there a hard target somewhere around me? You can very quickly scan around and uh, give an update. So earlier in the event, I was talking to, to uh, Tritech and, and we were talking about the multi-beam sonar and where we could see it really used for navigation. But what you're saying is if, if I put this on a, maybe on a, a smaller sector and run it with, with uh, higher speed, I can also very uh, efficiently use this uh, as a navigation uh, sonar too. That's right. You don't need to use it for a full 360 degree uh, imagery. It is really useful if you want to get your, your bearings or find your reference relative to something else. But you can do a sector scan, uh, either dead ahead or, or behind or to the side. And when you do a sector scan, um, it just focuses on that one sector. And if you drop the resolution, it can scan back and forth very quickly. And um, so in terms of the, the range resolution you get, um, down to 2.5 millimeter range resolution, which basically means that's the smallest kind of target you could differentiate between. And mm. um, that's an exceptional range resolution. Uh, so to get that capability on a small ROV, and um, it's really useful. You can also to get longer range capability up to 90 meters away. is uh, ideal for basic navigation, obstacle avoidance. I know that uh, Impact Subsea uh, have a blue eye. Have you been able to experience, experience with, uh, with the blue eye and, and your sonars? Uh, yeah, actually, we bought the... Um, uh, the Blue Eye uh, X3 uh, for uh, demoing our uh, sonar to our customers, uh, and actually it's a, it's a very good size. It's small and uh, very easy to carry on and uh, just go somewhere and drop it in the water and uh, and get some data to show it to uh, to customers. Uh, and uh, when I tried it, and from my experience, uh, as I mentioned before, I was working as an, as an ROV pilot. Uh, it's really easy uh, to fly and control. So yeah, I was really happy uh, using it. That's good to hear. Our plan is to go out with the vehicle a lot more in the coming months uh, when yeah. it warms up a little bit in Scotland and it's not uh, sub-zero temperatures. <laughs> so we've deployed the ROV in an uh, abandoned quarry, flooded quarry. Hmm. Uh, so we've got the kind of profile of the quarry um, as we kind of went around it. And yeah, in time, our plan is to go out and get uh, more exciting data that we can share with you. We, I talked about this with, with customers and, and, and also other suppliers and what we see is um, sonar is just one thing. It's, it's, it's a lot of different use cases as technology and even within one technology you can have different use cases. And I wonder if, if one of you could say something about how you look at that because I mean it, it's about picking the right equipment for the right job. Yeah, yeah. So. It is, it is quite a diverse uh, market that the sonar is supplied into. Um, I mean, the, the primary market is ROVs and AUVs. Uh, but yeah, we find all kinds of uh, applications. Uh, we've had monitoring app applications in aquaculture, looking at uh, uh, kind of nets for, for fish. 
Uh, we've had treasure hunters use the sonar before, where they're um, they they found somewhere under underground which is flooded, and they want to have a look down there before they actually send divers down there. So they send a sonar, sometimes just the sonar on a, a long cable, or sometimes with a small ROV. Yeah, there's a lot of random ones. But it is not just any old sonar. Then you, if if you want to go treasure hunting in a flooded mine or something, then you need one kind. And if you want to want your AUV not to to crash, it's it's important to have the other kind. So yeah, there's there's always uh, I mean, with any technology, there's compromises. Um, I guess if you want something really small and compact, traditionally you, you compromised a lot of capability to to get um, down to that size. Um, whereas I guess we've kind of bridged the, the market a little bit in that we're offering something really small and compact, but it's got the capability of a larger sonar. Yeah, but still spending spending some time like talking with you or with Blue Eye on on what are the job you do before you order the sonar to make sure the sonar is a good fit for for the task you're doing. Yeah, that's right. Have a, you need to have a clear understanding of what what the end user is trying to see, what they're trying to achieve. And once you've got that, you can advise whether a sonar is the best uh, item for that or whether they need some other kind of uh, sensor technology. So um, what would you say is the, the main difference between uh, this uh, sonar system and, and, and other sonar systems? This is actually an image scanning sonar. So if we compare it to the other image scanning sonars in the market, um, uh, you can see a lot of differences. Um, and um, mainly through the advanced implementation of the CHIRP technology uh, in the ISS 360 sonar, uh, it has a very high uh, range resolution. Uh, it's um, in the short range, it reaches uh, up to 2.5 millimeters. And mm. this enables an exceptional image clarity uh, to be produced. Uh, I'll share a photo here. Uh, basically here, we, we drop the sonar, as you can see here um, on the lower part of the photo on the left. Um, this is the sonar on a on a bracket uh, and it was uh, we, we got a 360 sonar so behind the sonar there's um, uh, the wall of the pool so you can see it here in the scan uh, and you can see like small targets around the uh, around the the sea floor here and we dropped a bicycle and a tire uh, so when you go to the the scan photo um, you can see you can see like a lot of details coming uh, like in the uh, regarding the like the bicycle, like you can see the tires uh, of the bicycle and and a lot of details from it and uh, like the tire that dropped uh, on the right hand side. Uh, also, you can find like uh, the the other targets and a lot of definitions uh, definition um, of these targets. Also, the sonar, uh, the ISS three sixty sonar, uh, has a fully inductively coupled uh, transducer. Uh, so it can run for a very long time without the need to uh, to sending it back to us uh, to change any kind of slip rings. Uh, also, when we compared the the scanning speed, and uh, which is very important in um, in different applications, uh, the ISS 360 is the fastest um among the others that we've seen uh, till now uh, and in some cases it reached up to six times faster um and all of these capabilities are packaged in uh, a small titanium housing uh, and uh, this like uh, provide a very long uh, lifetime uh, of operation Thank you very much for taking time to be here and talking with us and, and to our viewers. Um, we're looking forward to continue working with you and, and really uh, curious on, on where we'll be in the future and what kind of technology we can provide to, to our customers together and also see what other things you you bring out in, a, in the years to come. No, thanks for having us. And uh, yeah, we look forward to working with you guys as well. We'll see where things go. Thank you.